Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So uh, this is a video I've been looking forward to doing for quite some time. Um, this is just kind of the beginning of it. It's gonna take me a couple of days to do this video because there's gonna be some testing involved. But uh, essentially what we're looking here is um, at some caches that I built. These are two caches that I've already made. Um, and then I'm gonna be showing you how to make one. Uh, they're super simple to make, at least the ones that I make. Uh, the, only, the trickiest part is just finding the products to uh, assemble one of them. So, um, but I've already found everything that you're, you're gonna need and I'll make sure to leave links in the description where you can get all these products. Um, but, um, and they're pretty affordable to make as well. So you should be able to make one of these um, with everything for under $40. So, um, but for today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make a cache and then we're gonna fill one of these up um, with some survival supplies. And then um, this one, we're gonna fill up with ammo. So um, for those of you who don't know what a cache is, a, ca a cache is basically a con container, preferably a waterproof container that uh, you would bury um, on your way to a bug out location. If you can't access your bug out bag, um, something happens, you would just have a, um, basically a, a container full of essential survival supplies um, that are hidden at a predetermined location um, that you can access and will kind of facilitate you until your next, uh, the next step. So um, anyways, the, the pieces that you're gonna make, you're gonna need for this are some, we're gonna be make, using four inch PVC. Um, you can pretty much get this four inch PVC at any hardware store. Uh, the tricky part is finding the, uh, the pieces for it, like all the, uh, what do you call it? Like the um, accessories or whatever. Th this cap was like the toughest part to find. So, um, and the prices ranged from between $20 and $8 or more. So uh, the first one I found was this cap. I'm not even really sure the difference between this cap and this one. They're pretty much the same thickness. The only difference that I see is the top here is rounded, but um, the biggest difference was the price point. So the price of this cap, for whatever reason, was about 20 bucks. And this cap was about $6, $7, something like that. So um, this is the one I went with. Um, obviously, I'm going to be returning that one. Um, and then the cap that I'm going to be putting on top of here is a pressure fitted cap. I've never used one of these. This is an Oatly 33403 uh, four inch gripper. So essentially what you do is you put this cap on your pipe and then you just twist this wing nut until it's tight. There's a big rubber gasket around here and it just, I think what it does is it just screws and just presses against the side and just creates a, uh, a really tight seal. So um, I've never used one, but um, uh, I'm gonna see how well it works. Um, today. So once I've completed this one, I'm going to go ahead and fill these up with like some newspaper. And then I'm going to go and submerge them in a, uh, in a creek on my property for 24 hours and then uh, see, see how they do the next day. So um, I know some people use five gallon buckets and those would probably be okay if they were like left outside and I don't know, maybe you put a trash bag around them, but like a five gallon bucket, even if they have a gasket on them, there's still moisture is gonna find a way in there. So I've just found these to kind of be the better bet. Plus <clears throat> you can bury these and um, they're really strong and they can take quite a bit of impact. Um, so essentially what you're gonna need to make one of these is your four inch PVC pipe. Um, you can buy these in this, size section like pre-cut it's about 20 bucks for uh, a 20 inch section or a two foot section um but um and then i think they come in like eight foot lengths and then an eight foot length is i i don't know something like 40 or 50 dollars so if you thought if you plan on making a few of these just go ahead and get the eight foot length but um the other thing you're going to need is a uh, two pack of primer and PVC glue. So it comes with the, uh, the PVC primer and the PVC glue. Make sure that it's PVC and not ABS. Um, obviously I showed you the cap there and then this is the cap we're going to be gluing on permanently to the bottom. Um, and then the next thing you want, might want to do, um, it's not totally necessary, 
um, unless you're going to be hiding your cash outside. But uh, I got some flat green paint here, spray paint, and I'm just going to be painting this. So that is something to kind of consider. Um, like if you live out in colder regions, uh, it was something that kind of crossed my mind. If you're going to bury your cash um, and you think that you might have to access it during the winter, you're probably not going to be able to access it because once the ground freezes, you're just, it's frozen. You're not going to be able to dig through the ground to get to your cash. So something to think about. Um, uh, so I would say if you do have caches and it's going to be frozen to um, go ahead and you can probably just tie uh, a string around one of these or a really strong line and just hang them from a tree. Um, the other thing you might be wondering is how, once you do hide these, how do you find them? Um, the way I do it is I have a like a GPS coordinates tracker on my phone and I'll go out, pick a location, and then I write those coordinates down on paper. Uh, make sure you don't want to be storing coordinates to anything you don't want to be found on your phone. Don't be taking screenshots of the coordinates or anything like that. Just once you establish your coordinates, um, just go ahead, write it down, and then move on. <clears throat> so that's what we'll be doing. Uh, the other part of this um, of this kit here are the tools you'll need. I got some plumber's caulk. This is a siliconized caulking. And what I'm going to be doing is just putting a bead of caulk around the top of these caches because these lids here, unlike this one, are not gasketed. There's no gasket. They just screw on. So... Um, I, I've never really put these to too much of a test, but I have a strong feeling that water would easily pro easy, easily penetrate this if this was submerged in water or buried in the ground and, the, and got a lot of rainwater. So once I screw this on, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put just a little bit of grease around these threads because it's just gonna help make it a little easier to get off. Um, and then I'm going to put a nice uh, bead of uh, silicone around this around this lid. So the other thing you need is not totally necessary, but if you plan on putting ammo in your caches, uh, you might want to think about getting some of these Armor uh, Poly VCI bags. Uh, these bags are uh, essentially made to store metal, especially metal that is comprised of like uh, different minerals. So if you have something that has like brass, steel, and zinc all mixed together, you're gonna wanna put in a bag like this and it's going to keep it from um, uh, electrolysis and corroding. So these are corrosion-free bags. I'm not sure what the technology is that they use that keeps it from corroding, but um, this is what I'm gonna be storing my ammo in. So. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure to leave links in the description where you can get all this stuff because definitely if you plan on making one of these, I would say <clears throat> it's probably a better bet to just go online and especially when it comes to these pieces, to just go online and order them because it took me forever to find one and not every place um, had these fittings. And um, so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this one, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in. I'll probably put a survival kit in here, uh, but this one as of right now does have a survival kit in it and I'm gonna show you what I put in here. And then this one, I'm just gonna be putting um, straight ammo in this one. So anyways, guys, this should be a good video. All right, stay tuned. Okay, like I said, this is super simple to make. So just gonna go ahead and show you what you wanna do. You take your cap, you take your primer, and you just wanna coat the inside of your cap like that. And then coat the outside of your PVC pipe like this. Basically just where the cap is gonna be. Like that. And then you just take your glue And you glue that up like that. 
you don't be shy with the glue the inside and then you coat the outside like this Probably should be use this outdoors because it is strong smelling. But then you put that on and you just give it a good little twist and it pretty much seals immediately. So yeah, that's not moving. It's almost already sealed. So all right, that's pretty much that for that. And then um, that's the only part. Then I'm just going to put the uh, pressure fitting on. We're going to uh, paint this and then fill it full of uh, survival stuff. All right, stay tuned. Okay, while the other cache is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you what I plan on putting in this cache. So what I got here, and I've already went ahead and um, made sure all this stuff fits. It's a little tricky uh, to get it all in here perfectly. And um, that is also one of the reasons why it's good to make sure that you have at least a four inch cache so that you can get your uh, arm all the way down to the bottom if necessary. So um, there is kind of an order in which I put all this stuff. So I'll just go ahead and show you what I plan on putting in here. I got some, um, some Daytrex water bags. I have a can of mandarin oranges. I got a couple glow sticks. I have a Life Straw water filter. Was a lighter. Here's a can of tuna. Obviously, I chose this because it fits in there nicely. I have two granola bars, some fire starters. Here's a uh, field knife. I have a transistor radio, AM, FM radio. Um, this is just to kind of keep uh, tabs on what's going on. Believe it or not, this is a Radio Shack <clears throat> radio. For those of you who remember Radio Shack, but uh, this is just a great radio. I got it right when they were going out of business and it's just a great radio. Uh, I have an uh, emergency Mylar bag, a rain poncho and a fire steel. And then I have a roll of paracord and a rag. So I was going to put a shemog in here, but it just didn't quite fit. So I had to downsize to like a smaller rag. So um, I'll kind of show you how I'm going to fit all of this in here. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to go ahead and put the knife in first. And just kind of make sure that everything stays to the side. Put my glow sticks in. Essentially, I'm putting all my, my longer stuff in first. And I'm just going to try to fill up all the room at the bottom with these longer items. Get my lighter lighter in there, my fire steel. And see if I can get my poncho. And I'm just kind of placing these things up along the side and just packing it in here as best I can so I can utilize every bit of room. Go ahead and get the radio in there. Get the water. Actually, I'm gonna. I think I'll put the radio in last. I need to get these waters in here first. Those fire starters here, and then the radio. Get my tuna in here. that's going to fit. Put my oranges in here. And then what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to get the paracord, kind of wrap it in this rag. And then that way it'll act as almost like a packing so I can pack this all in there and it just keeps everything from inside from moving around. So you definitely have to be strategic when you're filling these caches because the 
you know, the round shape just isn't very accommodating to a lot of stuff. So, all right, I got that nice and tight, just hand tight. We don't want to make it too tight because, you know, if you're out in the wild and you um, you get this on too tight, um, it's just going to be hard, really hard to get this off, especially if it's been underground for a while. Um, but like I said, I'm going to go ahead and um, put a bead of silicone around this one uh, just as good measure to make sure the water doesn't get through these threads. So, all right, now that I'm done with that, I'm just going to go ahead and come over to this one and start filling it full of ammo. Okay, so one thing you should know about these bags is they do come in uh, big rolls. At least that's how I bought it. I just bought it in a huge, like, 200-foot roll. Um, and you just basically pull out the length that you want, the desired length, and you really just tie a knot at the bottom. Um, I'm sure if you have like a, a high grade impulse sealer, you could probably seal these like heat seal them, but um, tying them in knots works just, just as good. So, um, all right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start filling this cache with the um, ammo. Um, I decided I'm probably just going to comprise one of these caches with three um, <clears throat> three calibers of ammo. So I'm going to do um, nine millimeter for my EDC. I'm going to be doing some 22, 22 long rifle and then doing some 5.56. Five, and um, maybe hopefully I can fit in, if there's enough room, fit in a couple extra magazines. So um, this might take a little while. I already got a bag going here of the nine millimeter. So I'm just going to keep putting it in. <clears throat> I did would um, definitely suggest probably wearing some gloves um, just to keep the oils from your hands if you're going to be pulling the, the loose ammo out. Just eliminate the oil from your hands onto the ammo. Um, just anything you can do to keep the the potential of uh, contamination and corrosion down. So, probably just gonna put maybe like, I don't know, 200 rounds of the nine millimeter. And then I'm just gonna do this whole brick here of the 22 and probably a couple hundred rounds of the five, five, six. So, once you have your, your ammo in there, just go ahead and tie a knot. All that good, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put that at the bottom, and then start our 22. Yeah, maybe I can just pour it in here. Let's see. Oh yeah, that worked. That worked out good. Probably have more more bag than I need. All right, but having that length, it also helps just to kind of pull it out of the. Uh, the container because this is actually or no this is a four inch one it's a little harder to get my hand down this one but my arm down that one but putting that in there yeah you kind of want to be careful you don't want to be filling these up too much because they get pretty heavy after a while I mean, that's just a lot of <laughs> a lot of ammo especially if you're going to be hanging it from a tree so um, definitely probably advise bearing these rather than hanging them because they're going to be so heavy. Um, I'm going to keep that mag and I'm just going to keep keep on keeping on. And I'm going to, I got to go get another another bag for the uh, 5.56. Five, so uh, sit okay. So now I, um, I have all my 5.56 five, bagged up. I'm going to go ahead and tie that at the end. And 
go ahead and place that in there. And then I'll see if I can't get three magazines in here. Perfect. So that fits just perfect. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this lid in on. Um, I'll try to um, put links in the description for how I made these. Obviously, it's similar to the one I just I just demonstrated. Uh, the only difference is the caps, and I'm not quite sure what the parts were to these, but these. I can I definitely can tell you that this fitting here was a lot more common than um, than the other ones. It was easier to find this than it was the cap at the end um, and that compression fitting as well. So, all right, now that I got these all filled, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm either going to seal them up or I'm, you know, I might just empty them, like I said, and uh, put newspaper in for the test because I still have to, I still have to test these. So I might empty these, put the newspaper in, run the test. And then once I'm positive that these things are going to be airtight, I'm going to go ahead and put everything back in and then, um, and then get them relocated. So, all right, stay tuned. Okay, so it's been uh, it's been 24 hours. I'm gonna go ahead and retrieve these caches and then uh, we'll take them up to the garage, dry them off and see how they did. So back in the garage, I have these pretty thoroughly dried off. I just want to make sure that when I open one of these caches that there isn't residual water uh, hanging around the cap. And when I pull it off, it uh, pours down in there. And then, you know, the, the test is kind of compromised because I can't tell if the water came in from the inside uh, or as a result of me just taking the cap off. So. I'm just kind of going through, making sure that the edges of these caps are really dry. This one I'm not too worried about because I ended up putting too much, so much silicone around there. Uh, there's just no water near it. Uh, this is the the silicone I ended up going with. It's um, a product by White Lightning. It's just called Storm Blaster. So, and when I did put it on here, I ended up. I had to give it 24 hours to cure before I put it in the creek. So um, just to let you know, I did do a original test on these uh, before the one that you're viewing right now that kind of went askew. Um, I ended up keeping these in the creek for 48 hours. And when I pulled them out to see how they did, these two had drastically failed, um, mainly because the caulking the sealant that I used was really bad and I didn't give it enough time to properly cure so it just washed out. And then um, this one, I just didn't tighten the lid very, very much. So what I did differently is I upgraded the, the sealant for this one, let it cure properly for 24 hours. This one, I tightened down a lot more because I think I may have had a little bit of water penetration through this through the wing nut piece not not so much here but definitely i think there may have been some compromised leaks from the cap um and then this one i just tightened it more and i ended up putting some grease uh more grease on the threads here so i just wanted to give these kind of a proper a more proper test also in the video i had pulled this off and i think some of the water when I when I unscrewed it was able to seep down um, and there was some residual water around the edge that came in so I couldn't really tell if it was water that just got in there 
right when I pulled the cap off that was just kind of clinging to the edge um, or it actually just came in because it was a seal failure. So I did an, another test on these. Uh, like I said, I screwed this down a lot more and um, this one put better silicone. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take these off and see how, basically how they did. This one might take a little while because I put so much sealant in here, but I'm just gonna kind of take my knife. It's coming off because this stuff, it, it's actually this caulking or this silicone, even though I, I, I let it cure for 24 hours, it said that you can actually apply it in wet conditions and that it will start repelling water immediately. You can actually, I mean, you can actually apply this, this sealant to something while the thing is wet, so. Oh yeah, that came off. Well, that's surprising. I didn't think that was gonna come off so easily, but it did come off. And definitely water got in there. I'm not sure how it got in there, but there's some water in there. So that's surprising. I have a feeling that that maybe the water came in through this part, but it's definitely water coming from the top and not coming in from the bottom here. But I'm gonna pull this newspaper out. Yeah, there's definitely, this one failed. So I gave it a really, two really good true tests. So this is a failure. I'm gonna have to reassess how I designed this one. The water may have come through this part of the fitting here. Um, it was a while when I constructed this, so I'm not quite sure exactly what I did. I might put some, I don't know, this might be one that I'm just going to, I'll probably put some silicone right there, and this one might be one that I just never bury. I might just keep it above ground. So that one, I'm just going to have to go ahead and chalk that up as a failure. Um, I want to do this one last because I'm kind of rooting for this one to win, but uh all right, this is the one where it's just a greased cap. And that's dry. So that passed. That passed the test. No silicone, just grease. That's shocking. Like I said, I mean, I had these in the creek for over 24 hours facing, you know, facing the current, the cap facing the current. So there's definitely no leak detection on this one. It's bone dry. I don't know if you can see that, but. Yep. Yeah. so this one passed. I have a feeling the grease definitely helped keeping the water out. Okay, so moment of truth. All right, so this one, again, so what's happening, I think what's happening is the water's getting in there and then as soon as I loosen that up, it releases the water. Basically, that's, it's releasing the water because as soon as the gasket, this gasket here, basically the, the way this works is you have two caps and then as you squeeze it, they push this rubber gasket out against the sidewalls of the pipe and that's what creeps, creates the seal. But sometimes water can get inside, inside this cap. It contains the water inside the cap, but as soon as you release it and unloosen it, the water is able to then escape from the gasket and you get a tiny bit of residual water that's released right when you open it. So it's not bad, it's just a couple little drips, 
but um, you know that's not going to hurt hurt the stuff in it. I mean, it's protecting it's protecting the products in there, and I don't see any I don't see any leakage at the bottom. So our cap down here held tight. There was no water penetration from from this side. So I don't know if you can see that, but. I'd say overall, this was a, uh, you know, this was a success. Obviously, this was, this did the best, I have to say, but um, I think this succeeded too. So I'm going to go ahead and, and pass this one as well. So, all right, now I'm going to uh, go ahead and take these back into my house and uh, fill them back up with the uh, content. So this one, I'm going to go ahead and keep the ammo in this one. And then this one was going to get the survival product. So, all right, stay tuned. All right, everyone, that'll do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions on how to build one of these, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. I'll, uh, I'll do my best to uh, get those questions answered. Also, if you're interested in making one of these yourself, um, I'll also leave links in the description where you can get the fittings uh, to build one. And, um, if you're also, if you're interested in just buying one completed, I'll leave links in the description where you can just buy one as well. So, um, I got these all filled back up with the, uh, survival stuff. Now I'm going to go up and, uh, get these buried. So, all right, until the next one, stay prepared. <laughs>